Hi, I'm standing at the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And uh, I'm here today to take a stand and pray. So if you would join me in a scripture reading from Psalms 103, it says that the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He's slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our sins. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Sorry, I repeated that, but it's good to repeat. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. And as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all the heavenly host, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. That's from Psalms 103. We're reminded in there that um, our life is short. Uh, it's not about who's in the White House. It's about uh, the authority that God has over um, the nations. Jesus is the hope of the nations. I would like to share with you a minute a dream that I had back in April, or actually more like an impression, an image. And it was of uh, Donald J. Trump, and he was in his black suit with a red tie and a white shirt. But that's not unusual. Uh, what I found unusual in the dream is that he had no shoes and no socks on. And so that just really led me to, um, to look into the scriptures of why he wouldn't have shoes on. And where I got led was holy ground. And twice it's mentioned in God's word that you are standing on holy ground to take off your sandals. Once it was spoken to Moses at the burning bush and the other time it was spoken to Joshua just before he's giving his um, uh, instructions for Jericho. And so what I really like about what Joshua said was, he said to the messenger of the Lord, he said, are you for us or against our enemies? And the angel of the Lord said, neither. And then he told him to take off his shoes for his standing on holy ground. So today um, I'm reminded that this ground isn't holy because of who holds the position here. This ground is holy because the Lord God is above all nations. He's in all power and all authority. Jesus Christ died, he rose from the dead, and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where he shall come back to judge the living and the dead. So we just bow ourselves before you, God, and humble ourselves and say that you are holy. Give us a holy reverence of fear for the Lord. I pray, Father God, that would be so of the administration present and in the future. We pray for the generations upon generations that are coming, even after this. Soon, uh, you know, we, we will, we flourish for a while and then we're gone. But Jesus, you are the same forever, yesterday, today, and always. So we stand on this promise. Church, rise up and pray for our nation. I just want to encourage you. I hope just running around the uh, capital of D.C. has encouraged you to pray for our country, pray for our leaders, and don't do it with anger and hostility because God wants us to, to simply pray, humble ourselves before him. We love you, God, with all our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength. Help us, Lord God, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.